Hey, yo. What's up, champions? Fam, it's Zeke 4 back with a brand new video. Now, we're going to do a couple blitz runs, and I'm going to use a couple of different characters to get a couple of runs in for my broskies and siskies of Phoenix Rises. So let's go ahead and begin. I would have done a hell mode, but unfortunately, I don't have some of the required characters needed, and it is what it is. We could take that with a grain, of, a grain of salt, but as long as we bounce back, that's all that matters. So we're going to go ahead and knock out some hard mode runs instead. And we're going to go ahead and begin using our broski Hall of Fame trickster, Hot Rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Rest in paradise, my boy. Free to play Hall of Fame unit that we got back in the day alongside Hall of Fame tech Nikki Bella. So we're going to go ahead and check out his setup right here. We do have a strap on him. It's the 20% gem damage strap that we had from his talent up uh, from a previous MLC. We are going to be running the sleeper hold submission, the eye rake that is going to allow us to steal health, and the eye poke that is going to deal damage and swap a random area into purple gems now for his trainer and coaching setup we got farouk for dual mp dual mp trainers are always a solid option especially if you don't feel like moving around your braze your stings your steel your wood so on and so forth when you got the dual characters especially when you got characters with very low charge moves it works like a dream. The same goes when you have the dual gem and move damage tra uh, trainers and coaches too. So they're always a solid option. But Farouk is going to be boosting our purple and green MP. So this is going to make it a breeze for us to get that eye poke off so we can cycle the um, health steal and the submission to get the job done when needed. Then we have Shield Roman Reigns. He's going to allow our health steal move to steal up to 50% more health, which is always good. Keeps us in, uh, keeps us in the fight. Of course, this is not uh, does not include leech gems. And finally, we have ourselves our free to play uh, free to play waifu from last December, if I recall correctly, a uh, modern era showboat. Lacey Evans boosting our purple and green gem damage. So we got a lot of duality here. We got the dual purple and green MP with Farouk, and then we got the dual purple and green gem damage with Lacey. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. And we're actually going to talk about a couple things because we had a lot of stuff that went down, man. After the release of Stevie Ray, happy to see Booker T's brother in there, happy to see Harlem Heat in the game uh, as, as, a, as a unit. You know, we got this brand new trial uh, trial version of Attitude Era Trickster Rey Mysterio, a junior, that is, and a monster of a unit. Now, personally, with the amount of uh, the amount of gems he was able to create and with the gears and stuff, he is a monster, very fun to the trickster. And uh, he's, he's very cool. I just literally feel sometimes you don't need that many of a specialty gem on the board, depending on what it is, because with literally with the proper placement of where they're going to go, it's probably going to not take out the entire board. So sometimes overkill is too much, especially when you know they're all popping off. It ain't like you're popping them off. And then next thing you know, the next grid drops down and the effects are still going upward or something. You know what I mean? It ain't, it's not, it's nothing like that. So sometimes it is a, a little bit overkill, but it doesn't take away from how incredible Rey Mysterio was. Aside from Rey's debut from the, from being in game, we also got another champion with none other than um, our, our broski, Ultimate Warrior, Hall of Fame striker, rest in paradise, my boy. He's coming through with, via the portal. So best of luck to everybody on that side. Hopefully you got busy and got him as well, as well as um, Rey Mysterio. So we got some new characters in the game. The Blitzes are up and running. We're waiting for tours to get started for some new uh, content. And of course... You know, we just got done Feud Weekend, so Showdown Weekend is coming up, meaning a new brand new character. Now, looking at the MLC, so far, they've been solid with the whole Starcade NWO theme, WCW homage for a month long. I actually I actually do like that because they, they got so much within the WWE IP that we can be covering so much more when it comes to content themes and story plots that could possibly be implemented into the game. The creativity is abundant and infinite. So I just hope that they tap into that. But we'll see. I would love to see us uh, see um, Sensational Sherry come into the game. I honestly wouldn't have no problem with um, if we don't get a Lundra Blaze, Medusa. Medusa would be dope. Uh, the Steiner brothers, a uh, new version of Ron Simmons, you know, first African-American um, heavyweight champion during the, in the WCW ever, actually. That was, that was, that was dope. 
that was dope. I mean, obviously, you have the, the, I'm not mentioning the times of Bobo Brazil or whatever, but you know what I mean? Like, world heavyweight champion Ron Simmons got it done before he came to um, WWF, WWE. So we got a lot that's going on with the, with this content. But I would like to see um, Sensational Sherry come into the game. Or, or, um, or, or Medusa. Medusa would be dope. WCW back during those days, I really didn't pay much mind to. I knew of the, I knew of the Stings, the Goldbergs, Hollywood Hogan, hauling them, but I didn't really watch it like that. I would watch it when I would go over to my cousin's house, uh, my aunt's house, watch it with my cousins whenever Nitro was on, but it wasn't my go-to. I was a forever and forever will be a SmackDown baby for, 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 for life. But, Blitzes are back at it, so we gotta discuss this, man. This is something that's really interesting. Where do you think Champions is? Where do you think the state of Champions is right now? Because there's been a lot of killer, crazy improvements. I can't deny that Champions is no longer the game it once was. That you know, when every uh, every week it seemed like I was complaining about something, but I'm also getting to a point where I have to uh, I have to um, take account and recognize something that I feel needs to be addressed. It just really feels like we're not going anywhere where either the auto clears were good now personally i do feel and i do suggest this possibly with as much of a grind as blitzes showdowns and feuds are i feel the one that could afford to be given the auto clear purpose would be blitzes i feel that you should be able to go ahead and set the amount of blitz runs that you want to do not out of the amount of blitz tickets you have right Choose that amount, click one button, boom, you done all your done all your stuff. You set up your team. If you got the bonus character in there, boom, it's done. And then it'd be like you go to continue and it's like, would you like to manually do this blitz or would you like to auto clear? And you click auto clear and then it says, okay, how many how many um the runs would you like to do for normal mode if in or if you since if you don't got a character up so you can do the hearts or so on and so forth, right? If you could do that, I think that would be another piece of like a piece of true quality of life coming into the game. And then people can truly just focus in on the showdown characters and the uh, and grinds as well as the feud weekend um champions and content. So I feel that would be something that was great, but showdowns and feuds you should still be able to grind out. You still should be able to do that because it has to be a a, a respect thing on both sides. We do our part by doing this for you with the blitzes. Y'all still got to do y'all part by doing the doing the feuds and the showdowns. And I think a lot of people would see eye to eye with that. But something that's also gotten me, aside from the stagnant um, content, because it's still the same, you know, you, you get your new character each week, you get a tour for them, then you got to make sure you knock that out before you have to do your showdown or your feud. Every other week, things have improved. It isn't a, a weekly blitz. But it's still the same rigmarole. And on top of that, with the auto clear now being introduced, that makes it a whole lot easier for you to be done, which does a lot save you time. And we all get the same 24, no matter where you are in the world. So that is also a blessing. However, when you look at the road, the road, once you get to the five star matches, I really feel like the amount that everyone is getting from the road now, I feel we should be getting a lot more. Um, looking at the last of the five star um, SummerSlam uh, five star matches in the in the row, the latest book that came out in Hell Mode, when you go up against Ivar, you shouldn't be getting 600 TP. You should easily be getting what, what I feel could be rightfully so, in my opinion, personal opinion. Even if you disagree, hey Merrick, I'm gonna check that video out for the for those straps because I got to talk about straps in this video too. Um, I feel that you should be getting like easily without question, without hesitation, you should easily be getting like maybe three, 4,000 TP, like four of the thousand bag TPs, TP bags. And when you're going up against characters in that final one, you should be getting easily over 10 to 20 million in coins. Because when you look at the difficulty spike, knowing that these characters got their gear, they've got the perks that are not, 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 like nullifying your multiply gems or your move damage or gem damage. Like that's true in-game content and true in-game content should be truly rewarding. When I get to the five-star emerald tokens from the road, that should be one time where the player is allotted to choose what token they need. If I have nine of the five-star emerald acrobat headdresses for Sean, and the last one has been evading me for months, I should be able to get to that token case, open it, and have the choice of which token I am going to uh, go ahead and select for my, uh, for my squad, for my roster. That should be allotted. Now, when it comes to getting those tokens outside of the road, 
such as milestone rewards. That should be RNG. But when you put in the work to get through content like the road, as difficult as it becomes, knowing especially the class error requirements, the husbando and waifu requirements, you should be given common courtesy from that company, from Scopely and Champions, to pick at least those uh, those uh, those token case choices for your emerald. And then when it comes to the other tokens, like your four star gold tokens or five star gold tokens, you should be getting them in abundance now too. Like I said, like four thousand TP, 10, 20 million coins, because you know it's going to be gone that era by by the next like coin contest or talent up. You know you're going to burn through it, so you should be able to make it up without issue, especially if it's just for a one time reward. I think that we should be allotted that uh, that courtesy, but things are subject to change. And just like that, we got hit with the Dodger. It is what it is because we're just talking right now. Uh, but the road's difficult. Again, not everyone has maxed out perks. Not everyone has top tier, god tier champions. And again, just because you got one god tier, a uh, god tier husbando or waifu, doesn't mean that you're going to have all the others needed to color, cover all your, um, cover all your tracks when it comes to end game content. So I always just sit back and look at stuff like that, and I just think that it should be taken in consideration. Um, looking at the end game content, there should be that option of choice there. We need the auto clearing for blitzes, and um, I feel rewards should be improved. Overall, like they they're getting better. That we steadily seeing it uh, happen over time. They've gotten better with the rewards that come from the MLC limited time tours. But I still feel like we need other things to keep us entertained too. Um, invasion should have came back. I get that there was the issue with the people figuring out how to hack the, the and basically take advantage of invasion so they can walk away with the best uh, um rewards. I get it, but at the end of the day, that's also something that happened because. Scopely didn't have the security to do that. The same way that I'm kind of hesitant about this upcoming content that we're about to get. The same way that things went down with the Bailey situation, you know, um, the Bailey contest. Uh, yeah, it was unfortunate that that happened. And, you know, I feel I understand why people feel cheated and, oh, the, the experience was ruined because of a select few. But at the same time, if something is used at the right out of the gate, it's a thing of a situation where this was not supposed to happen, but at the same time, I can benefit from it. I can't blame someone for wanting to take that route. I understand it hurts, sucks when it uh, when everyone else has to suffer the consequences of those actions of the few, but at the same time, the game shouldn't have been allowed to do that right out of the gate. The game shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened. That shouldn't have been going down. That shouldn't have been what uh, what was up. That that's just being God honest truth. Like it shouldn't have been able to happen or permitted if the game was being taken care of and looked over as the way it should have been. And that is just straight facts, whether you like it or not. But it makes you worry about other content because again, like I said, invasions were cool. All you had to do is improve the security on it so everyone could be able to do their thing, get their first, second, third prizes, and improve it over time like you've done with uh, with other pieces of the game and parts of the game. I think everything would be fine. But now, you know, things, like I said, things get stagnant. It feels like a job. You got to grind. Uh, you got to work all week. You got to take care of kids. You got to take care of family. You got uh, personal issues you got to attend to. And then you got to grind out hours on end of blitzes. You got to grind out hours of, of time on the weekend where you could be with your significant others or just hanging out or collecting yourself. You're basically going from working your full-time job that you're paid for during the week to working a job that you don't get paid for, but you spend money on all over the weekend it doesn't make sense and especially when looking at the rewards the rewards being as st as stagnant as they've been for such a long time it makes you truly question like is it really worth it anymore and with uh, with a lot of players leaving the game and you you start to just start piecing things together and you gotta be like man like what is really going on with champions? And even if you've spent mad money, I I say it again. There's a lot of times where I sit back and think, I don't want to do this anymore. But I also look back at myself and I think of all the money I've spent on this game. Do I really want to, you know, play myself out in that type of situation? And no, I really do not. But I also got to be realistic. Yeah, we're getting more consistent MLCs. Yes, people are getting solid characters and opportunities and resources when permitted to, uh, to do such a thing. I have no no qualms or no issue with that at all. I will never
never have a problem with that. But on the other side, you got to look at like not everyone has the money to clear the final milestones of the weekend contest. Not everybody has the top tier units that's to this point in the uh, point in time. Yes, the Silver League, uh, le uh, the league loop has improved. Yes, there's a lot of things that are going on in the game that are helping everybody out to a standard that you could say that you can walk away happy and satisfied as a customer. I am not taking that away. But at the same time, this is a game that is it, either champions succeeds or it quietly crumbles. And I, I get a, a pessimistic outlook right now because they're oh, trying to do a lot all at once. They're trying to do a lot all at once, let alone with what we're normally doing. And the stuff really isn't exciting anymore. Uh, getting the chase champion has just become like it's a part of the j agenda. It's a part of the job. It's not a thing of like I literally I only see a hand. Look, this is how bad this is. I literally see people say I don't want the chase champion. And somehow, some way they still end up going after the chase champion. You know what I mean? Like it becomes a thing where like it's just a part of the norm now, I guess. And the norm is doing your auto clears, you know, getting your auto clears, doing that, your insta claim, okay? Going into your faction, getting your daily stars, knocking out your daily stars, getting your purchases, collecting your uh, your coins and everything, spending your coins, getting that knocked out, waiting for your weekend showdown to show up so you can go ahead and get work and see if you and your broskies and siskies can go ahead and knock out some numbers, waiting for your showdown to show up so then you can go ahead and knock that out and hope and pray that you get mad, mad lucky and walk away with the characters there, going to your tours, hoping that you've put in enough work and your five stars can carry you high enough to get these uh, the dookie butt rewards because again, like I said, when I'm in the final piece of this content and more than likely they might strike continue to drop more and more as we go new and new books and everything we might get a whole nother thing because we don't know what they're going to do i should easily be getting four thousand from this store i uh from, from that note alone from this uh, from this note no four million i need 10 million when i get to uh, when i get over here when i'm uh when i'm dealing uh, with the tp over here this should be eight thousand because you look at the amount that i'm going to have to use on one superstar and their character uh character uh, um set their moves their tokens their star rarity let alone if i want to fill out hollow stars it becomes a lot star fragments honestly should be uh, be an option in this game by now these type of tokens we should be having 50 100 of these tokens by now to spread the wealth at least in the final end book of it when it comes to this uh these emerald tokens again i feel that this is the situation where you have that option let me pick out the, the uh, pick out my uh, my token here so i can do what i want here there there's a lot of things that they can do in this game that may that could be a, that can overall change the experience, change the overall thing. Um, banners are too convoluted. We have Acrobat Asuka's cash loot on and available when Asuka Acrobat is already on this banner. She's a card in the in the weekly banner. I personally feel that what they should have done is done an approach just like FGO, where in which with FGO you have or Dokkan Battle you or, or One Piece. Um, basically, FGO and FGO and Dokkan Battle have run banners for an entire month. What they could have done here is, and yet it might have been a lot more work for the Scopely content creators, but you could have easily done this. You could have easily made one entire Starcade NW, NWO's Revenge loot. And it had everything required because we already go on the blog and the newsletter. We already see who the bonus characters are. We already see who uh, what the tours are going to be. So that lets you know what's already going to be on the banner. The content creators release all the all of the characters that are going to be debuted. Your Stevie Ray, your Booker T, your Stacey Keebler, your Ray Mysterio, and whoever's coming out this weekend. Let alone possibly the net. No, no, well this uh, this weekend. Let alone possibly next week. Right? You have all the you have all those characters on one banner for the entire month you have an entire month 30 to 31 days to pull on that banner to walk away with the characters you need to get the tours done let alone possibly pull up a pull up a, a and pick up a fuse for your free-to-play champion possibly throw some charges some shards for the chase champion on there maybe 25 50 shards possibly in the featured section and then you call it a day anybody else like austin um oscar anybody like that they could have easily been f super rares very rare. 
You could easily put them all on one banner and call it a day. Or you could go the Dokkan route. Dokkan does the situation where they have dual Dokkan Fest. For this past anniversary, we had Master Ultra Instinct Goku and Evolution Blue Vegeta from the um, Universal Survival Saga, representatives of, team, uh, of Universe 7, 7, right? You had them come out. And they had crazy skills. They had crazy abilities. Um, um, category. Um, uh, they had uh, the uh, category leaders as category leaders. And another way of saying it, they basically their uh, their boost trainer coaching promoter ability helped out the uh, um representatives of Universal uh, Universe Seven and everything like that. And they introduced their own categories as well. You could. They had two different banners though. Ma uh, Master Ultra Instant Goku had different characters on his. And Evolution Blue Vegeta had different uh, characters on his. So you had the two banners up the entire month that also have bonuses and discounts and everything. You had the, that up for an entire month and you had a choice. You could go in on Vegeta first and get him and then go for Goku. You could go for Goku and then go for Vegeta. But you had the option. WWE champions could easily do the same thing here. And a better way to explain it is this. You could easily have a month-long premium loot. Just like instead, but instead of it changing every single week, the same way you have everybody on the one side and you have the others on the other. So you could easily have. Booker T, Stevie Ray, Rey Mysterio, shards for St uh, for Stacy Keebler, possibly Sensational Sherry if she shows up. You can have all those characters on one banner, and then you could have another banner that is the uh, the the other side. Like one banner could literally be Husbandos and Attitude Era. The other banner could be Waifus and Modern Era, and you could easily have it sorted out where the Husbando banner has Rey Mysterio and Stevie Ray, and then you have the Waifu banner that has Asuka and all of them on there. You have a higher chance of picking up shards for Stacey Keebler, and you have your uh, your Waifu uh, mega superstars that are featured for the month on that banner. You got two different reasons to pull. You got two different reasons, but you got strong odds to walk away with something solid and nice and everybody gets a choice champions could do it a multitude of ways they could do that route but again dokkan battle fgo when castoria comes out next year they're going to do the same thing they did with skyhawk scotty caster in merlin and waver before them they're going to, they had that anniversary loop was up for an entire month the anniversary for goku and vegeta for dokkan battle that was up for an entire month two banners that you had a reason to pull for you do not need multiple banners if anything, you could have one MLC banner that, that features everybody. You have your free-to-play loot. And then you bring in your strap loot here and there. But these cash loots, there's no point of having these cash loots when we're having shots at Stacey Keebler shards already basically for free. There's no point of having the loot for Asuka at a higher star rarity. I get that. When she's featured on this banner. She's on the Stone Cold banner. Some things are just too much when you, when you really don't have to do it like that. So, I, like, compacting, that would be great. Or just slowing down on champions. I remember there was a point in time in the game where, genuinely, we were able, like, it, it was forever and a day in between new characters. Now, you're getting so many new characters, it's hard to stay up on everything, especially when considering resources and what you got to do with the game. So, it's... It's unfortunate that it's a play. It's playing out this way. It's it's a shame that uh, that they're going to go ahead and do what they do. But at the same time, I'm not mad at them either. It, it, it's a business at the end of the day. I just pay attention to stuff, and I really genuinely feel that this could be done better. Um, we're gonna run Batista for the uh, for this run. And uh, we're going to put him in. We got the Batista Bomb dealing damage and modifying an area into heal gems. Front Power Slam dealing damage and choosing gems to destroy. And then we have the Spear that's going to swap a 4 by one area into yellow gems. And for our trainers and coaches, we just got two trainers right now. We have the yellow moves start with uh, with 2 MP and the red starts with 1. And with perks, this is basically going to make this an easy clap for us to um, start off right out of the gate and hit that Batista Bomb. And then we got yellow move damage. We could have done um, Randy Orton, um, Viper, but we got Big E on here. And I'm looking forward to seeing a new Big E, especially with him now being champion. The same way we got Tech Drew, uh, I think we're going to end up getting a, a, a new Big E that's going to be a monster. A powerhouse Big E would be the best option here. But we're going to go ahead and run this too. Just switch it up. Do something a little different and um, have fun with it. But 
the, the, there's too many characters right now that I feel that's kind of hurting the game. Uh, the stale content, I really feel with an IP for WWE, with so many classic pay-per-views, I miss the pay-per-view and the show tours from when the game started. They should bring that back. Players or uh, player appreciation tours. We haven't seen those in a bop and people love them. All they got to do is upgrade them. We still get the glitch for that Stone Cold Steve Austin and Jeff Hardy tour that literally gives the most abysmal <laughs> rewards. But hey, if you were able to clear it, you got off good, right? You got off good. But um, yeah, man, like Champions is just in a weird state where things are going good, but it's also like just slowly feeling like it's getting to a stagnant purgatory state. And I don't want to see that happen. I really don't. But this is one of the best, if not, in my opinion, the best showboat free to play champion in the entire game. Batista, Batista, Batista. Now I am sad and unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate because I did not get a legendary strap for him. I did not. <laughs> I did not get an I, uh, um, I, 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 IOW icons of WrestleMania strap for him. And I'm dreading it now because I got so many solid yellow move damage, uh, move damage uh, medals that would make him even more of a monster. But you're going to see why. Like, look, just know yourself, know your worth. I want y'all to think about this real quick. Ken Shamrock, I bought all, I bought a pack for him and got him at four star bronze because I really wanted him. Right, I'm still dreading missing out on that Tech Kofi pack, but it's each his own. I got Tech Drew now, and then Big E is someone that literally you don't even have to go looking for him and you've pulled. So to have that combination and to know that Batista is literally a guy that anybody can have. That's another benefit of the game with these um I, uh, IOW characters and everything and the constant for, uh, MLC free-to-plays and chases. You can't say that you can't get somebody good for free because literally all you got to do is just do the content and you get the reward. So there's that balance of doing in-game content, but I still feel that the reward needs to be there. And I feel that the uh, this new Titan feud boss situation with co-op and the Grand Tournament, they have potential the same way uh, um invasions did but on the other side i'm also highly um, hesitant about it because i don't think they're going to give it enough li um, life so we can see and properly fix and improve the situations on one side the grand tournament sounded great but on the other side you got to think about it like look at all the amazing individuals and players in this community from all factions and to think, okay, yeah, there's people that are going to have an opportunity to get and like get involved. But then ultimately, in the end, there's going to be 16. And out of that 16, one of those 16 players is going to be walking away the champion with that amazing limited time strap. But I also want to think about this too. You might walk away the champion and got that member of that uh, like you know that commemorative strap uh, going for you the same way you get the trophies when you clear the MLCs. You might be able to get all that. But think about how much these characters, the influx of characters, have become that easily you could have that strap and you could be one of the best players in the entire world. But there's going to be a character that they come out that literally is going to make that strap look like it's nothing. It won't matter. It will not matter. So it, it's there are certain things that kind of the balance of the game, uh, the scaling, the power creep is something that needs to be uh, taken care of. And with the tournaments, you know, it's a great idea. And maybe if you do it yearly, that's something to get people like more reason, like just like, yeah, like the Pokemon League or like a tournament like that. You're looking forward to it. The World Tournament, the Olympics, right? Do it ever so often. Less is more improve the rewards improve all the overall experience or run mini tournaments here and there but like stuff like that that's a good distraction a good like take away from month-long contest you can easily run a couple tournaments and the rewards be great have different class themes and so on and so forth and everybody would enjoy that everybody would enjoy that but there has to be a balance there. And again, with how, oh, who's involved, I would love to see this tournament be done old school. In other words, you do this tournament and it's legit in the sense of no perks, no straps, no medals, just your moves, RNG of the board. And if you even wanted to go further, no trainers and coaches either. 
That would I, I would love to see them do that. I doubt they're going to do it. But they've made it fun with you being able to place bets. You're going to be able to sit back and watch and interact. It's going to be interesting. I just think I like I can honestly say I don't think a free to play player can make it unless there's like a free to play player out there that's been like got blessed with mad RNG has put in work has not made any piss poor decisions when it comes to their roster and account and they are sitting on a couple five star goals. I believe it's possible. It has to be possible, but I don't think that they will make it in there, so make it into the tournament. So it kind of becomes a, cla a clash of the whales. And the numbers of whales is steadily dwindling, too. That's something that a lot of people don't think about, too, is like the whales, are like it, the numbers are going down because at, with every new toy, that's more money that has to be spent. And again, not everyone wants to be spending thousands of dollars or something to hit the final milestone of a contest that you make it basically made, made me stay up. I had not made me. But basically put it in my mind that I have to be responsible enough to stay up for this X amount of time to clear X amount of content and hope to God that I walk away with the with the new feature character from the showdown and feud weekend content block and hope to pray that me losing my sleep and going into a full work week was worth it. That's pretty much what, uh, what, uh, what it comes to. It's like, well, we're not forcing you to do it, but, I mean, teamwork makes your dream work, right? You're going to have to do that. I don't feel that we need to have those type of situations like that. And um, the tournament situation is one thing. Then we get to the um, feud boss. Co-op is hard because only a few people can truly do it. This isn't PlayStation 5. You know, this isn't Xbox. This is a mobile game. And yeah, not everyone has the, the, the you know, the million dollar stream setup. Not everyone has a, you know, top dollar, your latest iPhone. You got to work with what you have and you also got to be realistic with yourself. And I think that's another thing that could cripple certain factions because you're going to realize that maybe the rewards are good. Maybe whatever's going on around that is going to be beast mode for you to get behind. But think about how communication is within your faction. There's a lot of factions and I'm in one right now where you got people that are in your faction. They do their points. They do their scores. They take care of business. And I'm grateful. I'm thankful for that. But you have the situation where, like, they don't talk to people. They really don't. Like, unless you tag them and get up with them. And, yeah, that's one thing. But then you have factions out there that don't believe in Messenger. They don't got, they're going to have members that say they they have members sitting in their group that, that say, I refuse, I'm down to be in your faction, but I refuse to get line. I refuse to get Discord. I refuse to get Messenger group. I just don't like it. It's it's too much. It's one way that literally it could go south because we already got the thing of people pointing the finger when it comes to feuds, right? Like, dude, why are you running a, this um, a big of an overall team when you know dog and well you can't handle any of the matches? Or why don't you listen and lower your team so then you can be able to get easier points? It It's hard. You would literally need to be running teams of four, I believe, against these few bosses so you could uh, and have everyone cohesive, knowing their role, humbling themselves. Everyone would have to be on their P's and Q's. There couldn't be no slip ups. There could not be any mistakes. You would have to make sure that you are dominating everything each and every single time. Now, we're going to run um, DX Sean with this one. We're going to do this lap. We're going to do a couple more. We're going to do one with Sean. We're going to do one with... Uh, Drew, and then we're going to do one with um, Seth. So we're going to go ahead and um, put Sean in for this one. But I am I, I want to see how this plays out with uh, what they have aimed for this. Now we got double fury for Sean when it comes to his um to a strap, and we got the setup, the one turn setup here because especially with perks, we got Demon Balor, multiply gems doing additional damage plus generating an additional multiply gem. Then we got Shobo Matt Hardy. A previous Chase MLC champion increasing the strength of multiply gems. And then we have here Ember Moon for green gems being on the board and Rhea Ripley for blue gems being on the board. I can basically do this so that way if I drop a blue, I can basically cycle the green if it ever plays like that because RNG of the board is what it is. But I could also have put in a, I could have also placed uh, striker Sasha in there for blue damage for um, on the trainer side and on the coaching side I could put off in there for blue damage so that's some alternative builds if you want to work with people uh, and and get it figured out I really want to two to uh, two words for your skill play for um Sean and legit I'm 
I might save the last move set, like the moves, uh, move set, like the full run of it for a uh, for Gooker. But aside from that, we're literally just going to be able to two piece a uh, two piece and a biscuit a lot, a lot of these characters and make this a lot easier. But WWE Champions is just in a very interesting and fascinating state of mind and I just want everybody to win I don't want to see people leave but I also feel that things do need to get more ch interesting not challenging they are bringing out challenging content and there are a lot of top tier units out there that are just making it uh, making it either you know heaven on earth or, li or life of living hell for your account just because of who you have and who you don't have and who to combat but the t stories that could be done here I, I don't know why we don't get videos in here. I don't know why we don't have no, like, uh, Mass Effect, you know, Paragon Renegade stuff, face heel tactics as managers. I still don't know why we don't have that. We could easily have it. I just wish we had more interaction with them. I think Scopely asked to find out their identity within their team for champions of what they really want to be. Because literally, I still remember when they tried doing streams where they showcased the stuff and people were happy to interact with the creators and the designers and stuff. It showed that you care. FGO does that all the time. Dragalia Lost does that. Dokkan Battle does that. Champions started with a good idea and then they just let it fall flat. And I wish that they could bring it back because that type of stuff lets people know that you care. It lets people know that my I'm investing in the right company, the right brand, they're bringing in some new stuff. There's like an overhaul that Champions needs to completely commit to and that way things could get better for the player experience. But in the end, I mean, the ball's in their court. We'll just have to see how things go. But releasing new characters every single week isn't going to fix the uh, fix issues. Um, if anything, it's going to create more issues because you're going to feel like you're going to have to knock out so much content or spend so much amount of money, X amount of disposable in income, so you could keep up. And I don't feel like this should feel like a race and I don't feel like a game should feel like a job. And a lot of times that's a better way for me to, be, to, to place it in my thought of words is that what I meant to say is when I say that there's, it's stagnant, it's a stagnant job. It's the feeling like you're not getting anywhere. You might get a promotion here and there by getting a new five-star silver, bronze, or gold toy. But at the end of the day, look at what you have to do once you're done that. Once you're done investing everything, you got to now go back and get all the coins up so you can work on your next project. You got to get all your TP back, your, coin, your tokens. And again, depending on where you are with it, depending on how smart you are in real life with how you handle your money, probably you apply it in the end game and that helps you out a lot. But a lot of times, also, you don't know, you don't always know what's popping up. One minute, the newsletter is very vital, letting you know what's going on. The next minute, you don't know what, you don't know what uh, a secret event comes up. And then you're stuck deciding, well, do I go ahead and buy the packs for uh, for um, Piper for his gear? Or do I just keep rocking it out? Because I did not expect this to pop up. If you set it uh, early, ahead of time to let us know it was coming, then yeah, I'd probably go ahead and get it. But now that that's a fight or flight, sink or swim situation, more than likely I'm going to pass up the offer just because of how unprofessional it was. You could have told me what was coming. You could have, you could have shown pictures or something on the blog that, and that's the thing about like the, the thing about a lot of people is just like any humans. A lot of our problems are so simplistic, but we go so complex about the way to fix things or to go about things. You just sit back like, why didn't you just do that? You could have just released everything all at once and then we've been good. We'd have a whole month. We'd have an entire month's reference that we could always go to so we could know what would be up, what wouldn't be up. That's why I miss the old um, uh, the old Champions tier list um, website because it always had like the rotation of the store and stuff. And Merrick's is holding it down, doing his thing. That's another way to get some killer content because he knows he gets it. He gets the algorithm of Champions. There's always going to be something out. There's always going to be a banner out. There's always going to be something out. So you literally can make content off of what they're doing and that's bad. I'm making content off of the deals and stuff that you have in the game instead of content on the actual content of the game. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's just something that, like, it's, that's, that's just fascinating. Like, streams, gameplay videos, pulls. But it's like, dang, like, that says a lot about your game when you can genuinely make a video explaining 
all the offers that the store and the portal have to give you. And that's every day. You know how draining that is. It isn't a set amount of time, limited offers or bonus offers or something or X amount. Nah, man, we just got mad offers for days. And it doesn't, and that doesn't even necessarily mean that they're good offers too. So it is what it is. It is what it is. But I just really want this game to elevate and uh, elevate the experience. Like, like I said, and like I uh, mentioned, it literally feels like it's a job. You all go up, you might get a promotion here and there, but again, it feels like you start all the way over again. You have to start from the bottom and pick a, pick yourself back up. And again, if you're one of those players, I've seen it multiple times before, you could be a player who literally like goes to zero every single time. You don't save, you don't have a you don't have a fallback point. And that's going to make you less and less in love with the game and more and more in hate with it because because you're you, it's going to be like pushing a, a boulder up the mountain. And every time you make it to the top, you get try to kill you end up having to catch your breath. And because you have no choice, you got to let go. And by the time you go to catch the boulder, the boulder is already back down at the at the at the bottom of the mountain. And you got to go back and push it up. It's insanity. It's not the good kind of insanity. And they can manage this a whole lot better. And I want them to manage it a whole lot better. It's just a question of if they will. Again, you don't need multiple cha- uh, characters. You g- you have good content. Improve it. Make it better. Come up with different options. Come up with an original storyline for the manager sp- stick of the of the game. Bring up and uh, bring up tours, new uh, tours, uh, new tours that bring back the the show themes. You can literally either with the amount of characters we have now. Just beef up the difficulty of the characters. Throw in a couple like difficulty bonuses for each node, and call it a day. Go up against Road Dog. Go up against the members of D Generation X. People would be cool with doing something for DX where you go up against all the different versions of them. Going up against Road Dog. Going up against China. Going up against Triple H. Going up against Sean. Going up against X Pac. People would clear that. People would love to do something like that. And you could have a prize wall that goes with it. You don't have to. You can just get the good rewards out of there, call it a day. You can have it where, like, just how FGO, people do challenge uh, challenge matches. Um, Turgalia lost. You got solo matches and stuff. There's so much provided here that you could do off of just a little bit of content. You can have, because, again, maybe we will. By Sunday, we'll know. Maybe we'll have a Survivor Series tour. Maybe you'll have one where it's Team SmackDown, Team Raw. Then you have, uh, you know, uh, brand warfare where it's both. You know, you go up against tag teams with representatives from both of the uh, both uh, both sides, male and female. You can bring back the mix match challenge stuff. You could easily have a thing where just like Fate Grand Order does the Gouda uh, the Gouda Gouda, where you have the 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 um, warring factions. You can have team uh, like the factions of uh, decide which brand they want to represent, and depending on the points, depending on the wins, or not even that. You can literally just don't even go off of that. Literally just go off the amount of times which tour was played the most and decide. Hey, SmackDown won, Raw won because y'all decide to clear X amount of matches. That will make it interesting. That will make it fun. It'd be different. It'd be something dope. And I think, think about this. I literally want people to think about this. What would you do if you actually got a weekend where you didn't have to feud? Where you didn't have to do showdown, and I get it. There's gonna be people who go, who are gonna miss it. Well, well, I didn't get my 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 player's chest today. I I hope I do. I was hoping to get another 800 of Rey Mysterio shards. Like I get that. Uh, like okay, you miss out on your epic strap, your million coins, so on and so forth. Okay, I get that. But to have a break and enjoy just some different content would be dope. Imagine if you had a something where you had a block of tours for Survivor Series for each Survivor Series up to this point, or WrestleMania up to this point, SummerSlam up to this point, Royal Rumble up to this point. Imagine if you had those type of setups. Imagine if they did a month long where you had content for the big four. You literally called the MLC the big four, and it was ran different. Your Royal Rumbles were a blitz. 1v1. Get through a 30. Boom. Done. The more the, the more the difficult the blitz is, the higher the ticket costs, but the better the rewards. 
you will be have more reason to do it to see if you can even make it through 30. Because once you get into it and you think about it, you got to fight 30 people, you're not going to want to quit. You're going to want to see it through to the end just to see if you can make it. Got content there. Then you could do Survivor Series. Again, you have uh, like Survivor Series was something. Yeah, Survivor Series, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and WrestleMania, right? So Royal Rumble's a blitz. Survivor Series, that could be your showdown. Have a showdown that's different and, and innovative and, and unique. Wrestle or, or you could do Survivor Series as feuds. Feuds, uh, feuds is, war, is brand warfare representing, and you can make it a whole th You could just get everybody involved one way or the other. You could have an MLC that's literally a blast from the past where each we week or each character that's introduced is from the past eras. Like you could literally start off with Legend. Then you could go to New Gen. Then you could go to Attitude. Then you could go to Ruthless Aggression. Then you could go, you could literally have a timeline. You could literally have content in this game that's based off the different eras. You could have content based off the pay-per-views. People would play it. And it'd be a break from the showdowns. It'd be a break from the feuds. It'd be a break from the blitzes. You know that people are going to play that stuff. But sometimes it's about switching it up. Like getting, uh, trying something and seeing what sticks. I don't, I, I genuinely don't know. And I don't want to hold y'all for long. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to hold y'all for long. I thought I was going to do more blitz runs, but um, look, because of my phone, I'm not. It is what it is. I, I got nothing but love for all of y'all. Maybe we can pull it off. Maybe, you know, we're going to try. But um, I basically said what I had to say. And um, we're going to just uh, um, switch it over. We're going to run Drew. We're going to turn one some people because I saw Batista. He caught my eye. Um, Drew is set up. So he's going to do the Claymore that makes the area in the yellow. He's got the overhead belly, the belly suplex. Shout out to my boy James Money for the overdead for Zombie Drew. Uh, making the random gems uh, of Snowfall. The Snowfalls are going to turn uh, turn into blue gems that columns that once they're broken. And then we have the Future Shock DDT. Literally only takes two, three matches for green. So you can get ahead and get your stuff started. Blue MP with Lawler. Green move damage for uh, Kevin Owens Tech. Acrobat uh, Uso J is going to be doing, uh, dealing additional green move damage and Alpha for blue gem damage. So this guy is going to be able to turn to want it and kill it. So now we're in a race to see if we can get this uh, video done before uh, <laughs> it cuts me out and says, you've been talking too much, Zeke. You need to stop. I don't know. I think you're talking asinine now. Maybe I am, but at least I'm getting it off my mind. But I want to see what everything goes. I want to see how everything goes. And um, I'm wishing for the best. Like I said, I love this game. I want to see everybody win. I want to see everybody have a good time. So um, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I mean, if someone hears me out, if someone gets a, a, gets their point across, that's all that matters. And we were loaded up with those two uh, two green matches. So we will see if we'll be able to hit the whole sequence of moves. But we're also in a race now to uh, get done. But um, Drew's a monster, man. Uh, Drew's a monster. There's so many opportunities here. What would you do to change the game? Uh, I really feel that we need the level slider by now. So that way people can know when to properly cut off when it comes to coin, uh, coin contests, let alone talent ups. I feel that the auto clear for blitzes would be great. Tournament. And the, uh, the tournament and the co-op bosses good are great ideas. I just feel that the tournament could have been a lot more fair and equal, have different brackets to it so everyone has a fair shot instead of it just being like either you make it or you don't. I mean, that's hard. That's life. That's reality. Either you make it or die. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's all about perspective, but inevitably it's just a, hard, a harsh truth. But on the other side of things, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dang, man, like this could literally be something great that people could start really looking forward to like the Olympics era every uh, four years or something. And like the rewards can be better. The experience experience could be fun and genuine so i just sit back and i think it's going to be a missed opportunity with both of them because co-op is really hard you genuinely got to be on the same page with everybody on your squad and um teamwork makes the dream work and it's what that like i said there's some people that are best players in the game but they don't like to talk they really do not 
And, you know, that's something that a lot of people, you got to pay attention. I don't want that causing bad blood between people either, because you literally are going to have to pick the right people to, you're literally going to have to form Voltron whenever you do these things. It is, I don't think these co-ops are going to be like, they're going to be fun, but they're the type of fun where you need to be on top of stuff. You need, it's like you're playing a game of risk. You need to know what you are doing. And it's the same way with invasions. Invasions showed that people are te there's difference between being a guy who can turn one turn two somebody and there's another thing between you being a freaking general and knowing how to maneuver and manipulate and control a field and that's what was shown in invasions the same thing could be done here with the turn uh, with, with the with the co-op uh, with the few bosses you're going to have to humble yourself understand your role your position while you're doing what you're doing and you got to think too not everyone has a setup like i said earlier so you know what happens if the game crashes? What happens if there's a red ring? What happens with this and that? There's a lot of things to cover in one false swoop. So we're going to have to see how this all plays and how this all fares. But it's an opportunity. It's something new. I just feel that with how Champions is, they won't give it enough lifespan to properly make it into what they have envisioned it becoming. And um, with how raw we as a community have been because simply uh, we know what we're putting up with. We've dealt with so much for so long that, you know, it's kind of hard to keep the faith <laughs> when you, it's like, yo, it's kind of like, yo, you bit me once. You might bite me again. You screw me once. You might screw me again. I love the game and uh, I'm down for these new characters, but you know, it's, it's going to get to a point where it doesn't matter who you drop. If the content isn't sm smacking, if it's not up to the standards that I rightfully deserve as a committed player and uh, a member of your community, I got to leave. And that's what a lot of people have been doing from all sides of the spectrum. And I just want everyone to have a good time. And when you got people leaving, even with the improvements to the game, you can't deny the other side. And that's just me. That's personally just me. But I got a feeling the champions will turn it around. But I, I'm hesitant. I'm a lot more hesitant now, and I'm not going to run them through the dirt. I'm not going to come after Furpo or nothing like that. I just think there's certain things in the game that can be managed better. The the superstars, the release, the amount of releases with the superstars, the um, grind for blitzes, showdowns, and feuds. Um, the feuds have gotten better because of the war score and then the bonuses. Like the IOW promoters, they have made things a lot better for a lot of people in the game. There is no denying that the IRA uh, promoters have definitely benefited everybody in such a good way when it comes to making you like content clears a lot sooner and quicker because you're getting more points and more bang for your buck so you're going to guess be able to knock it out easier because you got everything straight but again those promoters end up coming at a cost because they're benefiting you one way but at the same time they're costing you in resources too so it's it's a very interesting situation i feel like with fgo and how they go about the mp2 situation um and the mp5 where you can have the option you only need mp2 in reality but if you mark out for somebody go for mp5 if you would desire same thing with dokkan you only need one copy of the character you don't need multiple dupes of them i feel that uh like it, it just comes down to whatever you want to do servants and fgo they improve uh, they improve uh, by uh, doing their skills which i I guess you consider being their moves, but at the end of the day, like it's, it's, it's something completely different. And, um, I just want to see the overall experience continue to improve, but there's no denying that nobody wants to keep on playing games that were every weekend. It's like, it feels like you're going to have to spend money to clear the final milestone after putting up so much work and effort to realize that you were torted by not spending X amount of dollars. That's a true, genuine slap in the face that just isn't cool. Hey, that's not cool, bro. That is not cool. So, I mean, it is what it is. And no lie, we're going to round it out with Seth. I think think i don't even remember if i ran Seth already but if we didn't we're definitely going to be wrapping it up after this uh i love y'all and i hope that you enjoyed this video um bad guys alley will be coming shortly y'all are starting to ask me questions and i'm grateful for it so we're going to go ahead and take that to the bridge on that one we got um take that double takedown on Seth. We got the stomp, the finisher, de dealing damage, destroying blue gems. We got the falcon arrow, dealing damage and increasing the damage of our blue gems. We got the sling blade, four MP move. Literally doesn't even need, but like literally 
pops off like nothing. Like it's an easy clap, setting everything up out of the gate. It's going to be dealing damage and allowing us to choose an area move to swap into black. So unlike uh, unlike um, Piper, who was random, this one you get to choose. And for our setup, we have black MP with Bray. Let him in. Striker. Then we have black move damage from D Dean Ambrose, a.k.a. John Moxley. And then we have NWO, Big Show the Giant, for black gems to be on the board. Hopefully, one day, I'll have the black uh, the black move damage coach. I do not know who the coach is for black move damage or Gooker. I'd like to have both of the Gooker and that black move damage coach for Seth. And I also will be pulling for um, Acrobat Oscar for black move damage. And I do intend on getting his gear because Seth's definitely going to the moon after this. He's definitely a go-to guy on my squad. And I will get the promoter. I believe it is Triple H Powerhouse IOW for feuds because Seth is more of a feud machine for me. I can use him in showdowns, but at the same time, he's definitely going to be a feud monster. He, he's got his benefits on all ends. But um, as you've seen with my roster and my account, we're going to just like show you a little bit of what he can do hopefully we don't kill nobody that's the aim not to kill nobody we we try to showcase what the moves do so i want to show it what now there's one way of killing somebody so that's what we'll do we'll do the different levels of death with seth where it was like okay we we accessed one gate we, we did we did one but guys like seth like not everyone has a guy that's going to be a turn one killer like seth like literally all of his moves were loaded up with this uh for this blitz that makes saves me time that saves me effort and the low charge the low charge moves the high damage moves and gems combination is becoming more and more apparent um characters that are like the the meta is steadily like falling into place for five star goals but with that we got to see where everything else goes and expands i really feel that there needs to be a break from champions being released as as much as they are because a lot of people just don't know when to look away and <laughs> it's hard it's very hard for you to go ahead and uh Enjoy the game when each time you look up a new busted character comes out or you are selling characters that really it's like, why did you do this? Like, we didn't need this character. You, you didn't have to drop this at all. No one asked for that. And, you know, so it's it, it's just the thing of being a asset instead of, a, you know, a pain in the butt to your <laughs> community when it comes to superstar. You don't get like I, like I said. Goku mastered into uh, Ultra Instinct had a banner. Um, Evolution Blue Vegeta had a banner. They had like a few characters each, like five or seven other featured units on there. But you had a chance, and all those characters were good. They were happy. You were content. You don't, and that was for a month. You don't need a different banner each week. You don't need a different banner every two days. You don't need. You don't need all that. Just make it a one stop shop, and make or make the characters uh, debut count. Like that, like look up a guy named Tr the, the Truth DT, D A T R U T H, D T, Dokkan Battle. He does so much content off of showcasing two units, let let alone one unit that debuts for an entire month, just doing a showcase off of that character alone. We can't do that here. Yeah, that, 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 that's the thing, like, you got certain content, but you don't got content like way that Dokkan Battle has content. You can do rank ups and stuff and hunting quests of FGO. You got easy A's, uh, extreme super battle road, super battle road. You know, uh, you got all these different things, infinite dragon history, um, legendary Goku event, legendary Vegeta event. You got multiple things that you can run your characters off of in Dokkan battle. You can't do that in champions. The most you're going to get is highlights from a stream of feuds or a stream for showdown. You're not getting nobody sitting down and saying, hey, like aside from what we saw when the five star emblem tokens came out or a few gameplay showcases. Right. You're not really seeing anybody in the game going out of their way genuinely to like clear out everything with certain units and stuff and then looking at hp the health packs so on and so forth it's something it's a rare it's a it's something rare that 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 you see in champions where it could be a whole other grand scale so we're going to finish this up 
And y'all just talk to me in the comments below. I, I had to do this video. It was on my heart to do this video. Initially, I was just going to talk about Rey Mysterio and Ultimate Warrior. I did do some pulls for Asuka over the weekend. I did do some pulls and tried to get her. Instead, I got a four-star bronze of NWO Randy Savage. So I was happy about that. And, you know, waited long in long, long a day to get him. Patience of Virtue. We finally got him. So... With this being the last one, we'll see if we can pull everything off. Sometimes we get lucky, other times we do not. So, again, this is two by two. So, we drop it down, boom, we hit it, and his damage is just crazy. Hopefully, we can hit all the moves in succession, boom. We boost it. His gem damage is up 17. Now, again, think about it. If uh, if Alpha was on here, that'd be a whole other situation, too. A whole other situation. But he's dead. He ain't getting out of it. But that's pretty much it. And let me know if y'all agree with me or not. Sorry if I was too long-winded. But inevitably, I said what I had to say. Champions is in a place where it seems like it's good, but at the same time, it's stagnant. There's no, It's not going up or down. And because of that, it's getting worse in the overall experience for everybody. Losing a lot of people. Excited to see what happens with the um, uh, with the um, co-op feud bosses, but cooperation between p players, especially depending on what kind of faction you're in, is going to be very key. So you need to let your experienced players go ahead and test it out first before you decide to jump in. That's who, me personally. If you don't take it serious, get somebody to look, to look to someone else to figure it out to show you the ins and outs of it. The tournament is a great idea, but I feel there should have been more brackets um, because it's going to be very unfortunate. I'm wishing everyone the best of luck from all phases of the the tournament and i hope that those who place their bets pick the right choices if not at least you went with someone you support you and you're cool with supporting your friends your broskies and siskies and it is a cool little pastime i love that we are going to be able to experience it on twitch i'm looking forward to seeing how that unfolds but um aside from that we need to slow down on the on the champions and if we uh and if not just make it more manageable with the banners don't convolute it and when it comes to content there's so many ways the champions could build off of this we can go a uh, original story play a storyline where we can go and revisit history with classic pay-per-views and implement different type of match settings and difficulties and stipulations everything there's a lot of things that they could do with this ip and they're limiting themselves instead of tapping into it and going fully unlimited going master ultra instinct on this we got a game that again it could be a billion uh, can be a billion dollar success story but instead we got people who maybe they just, they might not care, they're overwhelmed, they don't know, they're not asking the right questions to get the proper answers to find the right resolve so that their community can uh, overall experience uh, the game that they had envisioned in their mind. I don't know what's going on, but at the end of the day, I feel that WWE Champions is a billion dollar IP that's being treated as if it's a million, like a million dollar come up, and that's not right. And because that, well, because of that, it's not only affecting the whales and how they spin, it's affecting players and overall with how they want to experience the game. So, um, with that being said, y'all, hey yo, always remember, bad times don't last, but champions do. Mad love always and forevermore to each and every single one of you of my beloved hashtag champions fan. Make sure to drop a people's elbow on the subscribe button, as well as hit a razor's edge on the bell icon to receive all future notifications from yours truly, Zeke 410. And until next time, let's chop it up within the comments below. Bad Guys Alley, leave your questions. I will give you answers. Let me know what you thought about this video. It was long-winded, but it was on my heart to drop it. And you know what? Support the broskies because you got to think the banners are getting out of hand from the mega superstar loot to now you got like you got different levels of characters. You got you got the players, you got people that just play this casually. And then you got players that are going in. They're pulling on all these banners, let alone the strap banners and everything. You know, they got the, the, the vault. They got mad diamonds, headliner loot. They got the gold league loot. They got everything. They got everybody sorted out. There's different levels of this. But at the end of the day, we're all players, right? And we should all have a fair and equal experience. And sometimes in these type of moments, it's kind of like I feel like anybody. Once you start getting comfortable that's when your downfall happens. And that's what I feel about this situation in Champions. For me, personally, because I see it throughout the community, I feel that we're in a good spot, but we're but Champions isn't taking advantage. It's kind of like, hey, we got they're, they're satisfied, they're satisfied. Now let's just stop. And yeah, they're introducing things that could be beneficial, could be game-changing, um, community-altering, for better or worse. But at the same time, 
we know that those of us that have been here, we know their history. We don't know how long it might work. It could be here for one moment and then it's gone forever. So it's kind of hard. But I do think that Champions needs to slow down on the character releases and change up the format of content so it's not stagnant and boring and predictable. I'd rather you launch a bunch of flops and know that you tried something different than just get comfortable with us like doing the normal and expecting us to keep coming back. And when reality, by us continuing to do the norm, it's it's devaluing the overall gaming experience. But y'all let me know. I'm not going to hold y'all any longer, but y'all stay blessed up and know that I got nothing but love for each and every single one of you, my beloved Hashtag Champions fam. And um, let the good times roll no matter what. And always remember, no matter where you are, where you're from, who you are, you, in my eyes, are forever a champion. So until next time, 